Let me take you back. The year is 2000 and X. The small boy rushes back from primary school, excited for the half hour he is allowed on the family computer. The CRT cracks into life, the machine whirring as it stirs from its eldritch slumber. It has about as much RAM as a pocket calculator, and only a single core processor, which ran slower than a fat kid strapped to a boulder. Windows 2000 finally reaches the desktop, and the child fumbles with the case, loading up the most important thing that the machine can load. The incredible machine. Contraptions. Well, technically even more contraptions. The original disc got broken, we had to have it replaced with the sequel. The Incredible Machine, or rather, even more contraptions as I knew it, as I was a dumb kid that couldn't read, was probably the earliest memories I have of video games. Hello there, I'm Devalk, aforementioned illiterate idiot, nice to meet you. I felt I needed something more wholesome to balance out the literal pornography I reviewed previously, and upon searching it up on a whim the other day, I discovered it was available on GOG. Now that brings me right back to single digits. The Incredible Machine is a physics-based trial and error simulator. Physics being in the biggest possible air quotes as how the physics actually work is known only to the original programmer, and even then only if given a considerable amount of coke in order to relive the sleep-deprived 4am mania where most programming takes place. This is best illustrated by the balls. Some fall according to gravity on a 2D plane, Others follow physics on an entirely different, simultaneous 2D plane, and the bouncy ball works on a zero-point energy field, allowing it to infinitely gain energy. All the living creatures in the game are named after famous scientists. You have Newton Mouse, named after Isaac Newton, Curie Cat, named after Marie Curie, Edison Alligator, Pavlov Mandrill, and of course, Mengele Mel Sherman. This is also the point where I need to reveal that I've been lying to you all. The game doesn't actually look like this. It looks like this. It runs at a cool, modern 800x600 only. Almost works in full screen, but in Windowed you get this which, if you have a big screen, looks like this. The option menus exist, but you can muffle the professor, so that's nice. The levels themselves come in four difficulties, easy through to expert, with about 50 each, totaling 210 in all. They usually consist of an objective, like cutting a balloon free, or genociding the murine population. <coughs> You're given a set of tools to achieve this, most of which you won't use, because ultimately it is a game about, above all else, exploiting the physics engine. Seriously, you can hook up a fan, a generator and a pinwheel and create infinite free energy. With it, you could solve world issues, like reliance on fossil fuels, filtering clean water, and food production for the hungry. Or you can just use it to warm Mel's house like it's Dresden. In an interview about the spiritual successor to the Incredible Machine, called Contraption Maker, Jeff Tunnell, who was the director of the original Incredible Machine, stated that since his original game, many similar games had missed the mark because of what he referred to as pixel placement, where you would just move parts around tiny amounts. This is in contrast to the Incredible Machine, where you move parts around tiny amounts in the vain hope of getting the physics engine to do what you want it to. Make no mistake, you are not here to play the games game. Exploit that shit like it's a Half-Life speedrun. For example, Mission 2 of Difficult, Free Newton, wants you to connect a bucket to four pulleys to open a cage, to then use the cat to scare the mouse onto a conveyor powered by the bucket, hitting a mouse in a cage, propelling Newton onto an anti-gravity pad, onto a springboard and onto the cheese. But why would you listen to them, when instead you can simply connect the bucket to one pulley and the cage, then use the anti-gravity plate and a conveniently placed mouse cage to knock the cheese to Newton, or going over half the parts and solving it far quicker. The game is at its best when you're finding weird solutions to its completely broken physics. And at its worst, it's an angry DM who slowly gets more and more annoyed you're not solving his situation with the exact adventure game moon logic he has devised until you get sick of his bullshit and uninstall the game and never touch that shit again. So did it live up to childhood memories? 
I'd say so, but bear in mind I was a dumb kid back then. The game still looks pretty nice, and there is a fair amount of fun to be found in the pre-made levels, and the build your own puzzle maker, allowing you to make whatever Rube Goldberg device you can devise. Although seven year old me either had far more patience for this game shit, or maybe I just didn't have standards yet. I don't have standards now either, if you've got a pulse, just DM me. Actually, if you don't have a pulse, DM me as well, I'm not going to discriminate, please. <clears throat> But even more contraption and all the other incredible machines are available on GOG for practically nothing, so you can pick them up if you have any interest in the franchise at all. There is also the game's spiritual successor, Contraption Maker, which has widescreen support, which is pretty nice, and is available on Steam, if you don't mind the arch style change to looking a bit like a cheap Flash game. Thank you to my buddy for doing the opening voiceover, I've linked his Twitter below. And thanks to you for watching. While you're here, please subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Real Life, Instagram, Fur Affinity, Guy